Lake Erie's ice cover shot up really quickly over the last couple of weeks. And while we know that increased lake ice can mean less lake effect, what does more lake ice mean for the eventual arrival of warmer weather? I'm looking for connections in the data in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. When Lake Erie freezes up, it tends to happen in a span of a few days to maybe a few weeks. That's because the lake is relatively shallow, so it freezes up pretty easily. All it takes is a decent stretch of cold weather with relatively little wind. And of course, we're in a pretty good stretch of such cold weather right now with almost two straight weeks of temperatures below freezing. As a result, Lake Erie's ice cover was estimated close to 80% as of Tuesday night. I've heard plenty of anecdotes arguing for or against more lake ice. The arguments for more lake ice tend to claim that more ice means less threat of lake effect. But then the opposite side of that argument is that more ice could mean more cold stretching into spring, especially when the winds blow. But is there actually any truth to those stories? This is where the data comes in. To sort things out, I separated 48 years of lake ice data going back to 1972 into two lists. A list of years where Lake Erie's ice cover peaked at at least 90%. There's 32 of those seasons. And a list where ice cover stayed below 90%. There are 16 of those seasons. Here's the average ice cover for each of those two lists. And remember, the seasons that had at least 90% ice cover, there were twice as many of those compared to the seasons that had less than 90% ice coverage. But you get the idea. The, the difference there is pretty dramatic. From there, I went and compared the average March temperatures. To start, I looked at all of those seasons combined. The average temperature for March, 34.4 degrees. If you look at just the seasons where lake ice hit at least 90%, the temperature dropped drops to 33.6 degrees. If you look at those seasons where ice stayed less than 90%, the temperature was 36 degrees. That's a pretty significant difference. Here's how April breaks down. Keep in mind by this point, a lot of ice would have melted if not completely disappeared, no matter where the ice cover maxed out in a particular season. The difference is less dramatic, but there's still a connection. More lake ice has historically led to a cooler start to spring. The connections aren't as clear cut when you look at data for snowfall. This top row is snowfall between March and April when the ice was greater than 90%, the total just a little over 15 inches. Here's a look at the snowfall when the peak ice was less than 90%. That total actually slightly lower, so it doesn't quite line up. One possible reason for that disconnect Lake effect snow isn't our only source of snowfall. Actually, I found that in the last 10 years, lake effect has only been responsible for about a third of Buffalo snowfall. The rest comes from bigger, what we call synoptic scale storms, where the whole region gets snow. So those snowfall averages don't reveal much about the connection between lake ice and the start of spring, but the average snowfall around here usually doesn't say much anyway. I will say though, when there's less lake ice, the occurrence of a bigger snowfall event tends to happen a little bit more often. So yeah, it looks like when you compare temperature and snowfall together, there is some connection between the idea that increased lake ice late winter into the early spring delays the onset of some of that warmer weather. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.